Okay. Welcome to today's stream. Um, I know the title says Red Drummond uh, Part One, but uh, we're just going to pick off pick up on the Red Drummond where we left off yesterday. So, uh, just to summarize from yesterday's uh, second stream, uh, I did the tip, which is silver, fine silver uh, tinsel, um, the tag, which is uh, yellow silk, uh, the tail and veiling, which are golden pheasant crests, and I'm using red re red weaver as an Indian crow substitute, and then a nice thick uh, black ostrich roll butt. Today we are going to work on the body uh, up to the shoulder tackle and maybe do the underwing as well, um, because that would be a good place to stop. Um, let me see here. So the body is, we're gonna do in medium flat tinsel and we're going to rib it with uh, this old, uh, medium silver oval. Just crank down the light here, it's a little bit bright. Right, let's get started. Uh, so first off, um, I'm just going to unwind my thread just a little bit. So, uh, hmm, order of operations here. So I don't, the, this, um, this Lagarden varnished finish French tinsel. This um, it's medium metal, uh, medium silver flat. And the thing about that particular tinsel is it's fairly thick. And so I'm not entirely certain I want to do a double layer. So I don't want I don't know if I want to go down and back or just down. Um, you know, I think I will do a, a double layer just because that looks nicer. So again, I tie my ribbing tinsel on the back side of the hook. Uh, so not like nine o'clock, you know, if you think of the hook as a clock face, not at nine o'clock, but like at 7.30, eight. Um, and that just helps, you know, keep the bulk down, you know, where you don't want it. Just gonna advance my Red. Smoothly and flatly. Uh, and so this body is split evenly, half and half. So I want to run my thread halfway and stop. And sometimes uh, I know people out there will measure uh, how far uh, to go. Um, and I'm just going to eyeball it because it's not that important to be super precise uh, with whether it's half and half. Um, And you also you also have to remember uh, if you're measuring it, um, there is a width to tinsel itself. Uh, just something to keep in mind when you're going to measure. So you know, I prefer to eyeball it uh, faster, easier. It usually turns out all right. And you know, unless your customer or viewer is measuring it, uh, they probably can't tell anyway. So, um, same with tying on the rib. 
I'm going to tie the body tinsel on the back side. Uh, and that's just because when you go to start wrapping the tinsel, you have to fold it. And I want that bulk, bulk of that fold to be on the back side of the body. So there we go. And these are going to be side by side wraps. Not overlapping, you don't want to overlap because that will introduce a slight unevenness to the body. And because I'm doing two wraps, I'm going down and back, uh, I want the first layer, at the very least, to be very even. The other thing is if you're overlapping wraps and tinsel, um, it can be pretty difficult to control the just the the uneven the the what am I trying to say the ridges that you create when wrapping it that way, um, and you want uh, you you want these body wraps to be as even as possible. I'm just gonna snug them up here as I go. easy. Now one of the big challenges with the Red Drummond is because there is no mid-body butt, there's nothing, there's nothing to hide any extra bulk that you put here. So you have to be very, very careful. about how much extra bulk, you have to be very careful about how much extra bulk you're putting here. And in fact, I'm gonna run the tag end of my rib all the way to the front, uh, just to make up a little bit of that extra bulk and make it a little bit more of a smooth transition. Uh, the other thing that has to go here are uh, over the first segment of the body are two Indian crow veilings. Uh, so I'm going to smooth this transition out just a little bit so the veilings can sit flat or flatter. And then uh, the veilings will tie on the rib, which is going to be, um, we're going to tie on the hackle and the rib. And the rib is just going to be, uh, I think the leftover bit of this flat silver tinsel. Uh, it does need to be broader, a broader tinsel on the front. Um, but I only need three turns of it. Or at least the way I like to do it, I only need three turns. So top and bottom veilings are gonna be the, the same Red Weaver uh, Indian Crest Substitute. Uh, and I think normally I would double these up just because they are a little bit uh, wispy, but because they're going over tinsel, they're going to be a little, they're going to stand out a little bit more. So um, I'm not going to worry about them being, you know, swallowed up by colored silk or anything. Uh, so Uh, 
and they should just barely make it all the way down to the butt. So like that long. There we go. Um, just gonna clean up a little bit of the mess. A little mess. Got red beaver feathers everywhere. You don't want to lose any of them because they are, <laughs> while less rare or those more common than Indian crow, you know, you don't come across red weaver skins all that often. So. Let's tie in both the bib and the hackle. So the hackle is going to be some of this nice dyed uh, white um, hackle or uh, neck hackle. We're going to tie this hackle on the back side. Like so. And then we're going to tie the rib on. So if the hackle goes on at like a nine o'clock, we'll tie the rib on at eight. Um, And that way the rib and the, the hackle will fall into the right places. Okay. And now, even though I'm gonna tie some silk floss over it, I'm gonna wax just a short little bit here where I tied in the hackle and the um, rib. Yes. Uh, and again, like I've said in other streams, it's just to help bind everything down so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, you know, hackle, hackle tips will pull out easily. So you just want to make sure, because you spent, you know, a decent amount of effort and time all the way up to now. So Again, you want to wrap it as smoothly as possible down.
And we wanna make sure we can leave ourselves a little bit of room at the head for you know, various things that have to go there, the shoulder hackle or the throat hackle. Um, and leave ourselves a nice, a, 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 good, a good space for a nice, you know, lacquer head. All right, nice. Yeah, even though these are strung hackles, they've all come unstrung. Okay, so now that I'm down at the head end, I am going to tie on my silk, and just like the first segment of the body, I'm gonna wrap it down and back. Uh, and again, I'm using uh, this very nice Japanese embroidery silk. stuff with the green writing on it. Don't actually know what it says, but it's really nice silk. Find that tune. It's really hard to do a body transition like this without adding any bulk. Uh, so there's always gonna be, there's always, just a little bit, but not bad. 
Okay. I'm going to wind the rib. I'm trying to match the angle of the rib in the second section with the angle of the rib that I had in the first section, so the parallel. But again, like I said, I really only want to do three turns of the rib. And just come up under the sign there. Extra. All right. So then fold my hackle just by sweeping the fibers all to one side. Under. I want the hackle just to follow the very trailing edge of that flat silver tinsel. Okay. Then I'm going to make one tire turn at the front, tie off on the side, just like the tinsel. down the end of the hackle and the uh, yeah so that's the uh, body complete I just need to do the throat and that is speckled galena or speckled guinea fall As per usual. Again, it's just to keep the fuzzies at bay and make sure uh, anything that I put on the tie down uh, isn't going anywhere. A little chunk of wax there.
Apple players. Just get the wrap. Throw the hackle, and I want, I want a pretty full throat on this. Um, So I'm actually going to take this all the way to here. Um, you'll see me unwind a little every now and then, and that's just to make sure I don't, I usually wind forward a little bit more than I have to, just to, um, you know, get the thread out of the way. Uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll wind it back uh, once I, I've tied in what I want to tie in. So it's just it's just to get the thread all the way. And you'll some some uh, classic Atlantic Sam fly tires will count their thread wraps. I'm not one of those. Um, I think in my opinion, if you practice, you know, good thread management, you keep it flat. Uh, you don't you won't have any problems. Uh, you know, maintaining yeah, tidy, tidy tying. Um, the other thing about that is I don't really care about like flies having small or you know perfect shaped heads. Um, you know, the historical flies didn't have you know perfect tiny heads. Uh, there's nothing you know, that delicate about them. So anyway, um, I am just going to smooth out the area where the underwing is going to go on, build up just a little bit of bulk at the head, nice and smooth. Um, and you got to build up you know, just a little bit of extra bulk. Um, I think that's something people don't realize because the hackle actually increases the thickness of right around here. And if you want your wing to transition smoothly over from over the body like this, you have to just build up that bulk to get it over the hackle right there. So that looks pretty good. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, I am going to do the underwing, uh, and then we'll call it a day for today. Uh, just a short stream today, yeah, it's Sunday afternoon. So the underwing is white tipped turkey. Let me just throw my turkey all over this. White tip turkey. We've got a number of options. Mm. Biggest question is how much white do I want and how much 
black or the darker bit that I want. I think this one's kind of got the sweet spot used up. Harvest. That's harvest gold or something like that. There's so many different kinds of turkeys. Uh, maybe uh, one day I'll show you guys some of my collection of turkey. So I think I have turkey flats. These are kind of like the, uh, the pre-tailed feathers. And they, uh, they still have the, the distinctive gray barring or the white barring, uh, but they tie a little bit shorter and a little bit finer. They're just about the <coughs> right length, right amount of white uh, for the tail, uh, the underwing. And I think this one is more or less symmetrical, which would be excellent. The bar is a little bit uneven, so it's not quite symmetrical as I would like it. Um, This one's a lot. This one's a lot better. So use this one. Um, and you might with these feathers, it's a little bit difficult to say how many flies they get out of them. You can usually get two, one larger fly, one smaller fly. Uh, this is a five-out hook, so I'm going to take the larger uh, slip out of these for this fly. Um, we're going to go for a pretty good chunk, uh, probably eight to 10 barbs, but this stuff, uh, this, these pre-tails are fine enough that I'm not actually going to count the barbs. I'm just going to go for an equal width chunk off the feather. Um, not super important, or I have never found it to be super important. Um, as long as the, the, the chunks, the, the pieces are of equal width. Could lay a couple of junks. Here are my two chunks, two slips or pieces or uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm going to shape them just a little bit so they will lay flat. On the body, go just like this.
All right. So that's the uh, the underling. I'm just gonna be gentle to pull here just to make sure it's nice and tight up against the throat handle. Then we're gonna tie this down. Gonna smooth out the butt ends just like we were tying on a wing. And then I'll, I'll tie off the thread and I'm gonna switch thread colors to black. Uh, I just want to make sure that the tie-in point there is solid, solidly up against the throat hackle. And again, uh, because I tied something in that could pull out fairly easily. Uh, and I'm going to wax my thread, bind down the, the ends and Okay, excellent. I'm gonna whip finish or whip off the, uh, the white thread because I'm gonna switch colors to black to tie in the wing. Um, again, I, I switch colors when I remember, I don't always remember to do it, but I do switch colors to black, my thread color to black. I'm finishing the fly because I'm gonna put black head cement and um, if I don't quite get the head cement perfectly around the hook, you might see a ring of white thread. You could, you could see a ring of thread or some patches of thread around uh, under the, the head cement. And so by using black thread, I can hide that just a little bit. So hiding the crimes as they would say in uh, certain industries. Um, yeah, so uh, with that, um, it's a great start uh, on a, a red Drummond. Um, give you guys just a little bit of a closer look. Um, and I'll show you from the side that I see it uh, because you guys are on, you know, across the table, so to speak. Come on, focus. Um, but yeah, pretty good start. So this will be the last stream uh, before the holidays. Uh, I'm going to take a break uh, for the week. I'll be back first week of the new year. Um, streaming again. Um, I think I'm going to stick with YouTube. Uh, YouTube seems to have the most consistent audience. Uh, yeah. And uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, like I said, I'll be back in the new year. If you enjoy what you've seen and you want to follow along or you want notifications for when I go live, uh, hit subscribe and, and hit the bell to be notified. Um, after the new year uh, starts, uh, I have classes. Classes are going to pick up for me. And so I'm probably going to cut down streaming uh, from, you know, I, I, I think I've streamed every single day this week uh, because I'm on break. Uh, but I'm going to try and stream once or twice a week uh, in the new year. Um, so stay tuned. 
if you want to see more of my work, uh, pictures, you can go to my Instagram, justwondering.brad. And if you would like to buy, purchase a fly that you've seen or uh, support the channel, uh, go to my Etsy shop, uh, Studio1213. And I uh, appreciate your support. Uh, like I said, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, take care.